Rightful heir, Kalis returns as the prophecy foretold. <laughs> Is your heart so filled with doubt? <laughs> when Worf doesn't come to his post on the bridge on time, Riker goes to his quarters to find out why. And he finds him tripping balls. <laughs> got a bunch of lit candles and he's engaged in some kind of ritual he says he's trying to reconnect to his klingon roots because the kids from birthright's connections made him start to doubt his own he says he's trying to summon a vision of kalis picard chastises him for shirking his duties on the ship and suggests he could have used the holodeck but Worf says it would have had to be real in order to work but either way it didn't work picard pretends to be stern but he brushes off Worf's abandonment of duty pretty easily Probably because he realizes that Worf is the most interesting character, and if they lose him, the show's really going to go downhill. When Picard says the Enterprise isn't the best place to do all of this, and asks where else he could go, Worf responds with Boreth. Picard then immediately says how far away they are from Boreth. Did he already know? If so, why bother even asking the question? Just say, let's go to Boreth. I think he was just trying to skip ahead in the script a little bit. We cut to a not-great matte painting of a cold place. Worf is sitting at a fire with a bunch of other Klingons when one of them claims to have a vision of Kalis. And Worf, being super dismayed that he hasn't had a vision yet, decides to leave, despite it only being ten days, which is really not that long. I mean, some people can barely stay awake in church for an hour, so I don't know. What kind of church do you go to that's only an hour? <laughs> well, I don't worship Cthulhu, so it's a little different. The head Klingon, Koroth, convinces him to stay. Koroth is played by Alan Oppenheimer, who has been working since the beginning of time, and who also has a lot of really cool voice acting credits. Later, Worf participates in another ceremony, and seems to actually see Kalis appear, and he and the other Klingons are stunned to find that this Kalis is physically real, and that he says he has finally returned. Kalis is played by Kevin Conway, who I recognized as the control voice from the 90s Outer Limits. He says he has returned because the Klingons have lost their way and he will reunite them, and everyone bows down to him except Worf. Kalis retrieves a sacred batleth and tells a story of where it came from, and Korth said no one was ever told that story, because it was to be used as verification that Kalis had indeed returned. Later, Kalis visits Worf, who uses his tricorder to see if Kalis is real, and it seems that he is. And he says that he met Worf before in a vision that he had as a child, but Worf is still doubtful. Probably because we've seen a bunch of entities that have been able to fake who they are down to a genetic level. It was good that Worf was still skeptical. And we cut to that matte painting again, which looks even faker when it's depicting daytime. Still not convinced. Worf challenges Kalis' claim to leadership, which leads to a battle between them. And the fight looked way more convincing than past Klingon fights. It looked like they were actually fighting, not just acting out a fight. That's true, I didn't think about that. It seems to be a pretty even match. Kalis suddenly starts laughing and says they should all celebrate being Klingons and fighting for honor. And Worf doesn't know what to do. And everyone else gets caught up in a Klingon fervor from Kalis' speech. Worf makes his way back to the Enterprise, and they're en route to pick up Kalis to escort him to the Klingon homeworld, and during a meeting, Beverly offers even more suggestions as to what Kalis could be. He may be a coalescent being taking Klingon form, or a bio-replicant, or even a Klingon who has been surgically altered to look like Kalis. But Worf is still open to the option that it could be the real Kalis. Which the rest of the crew openly calls out as being ridiculous. What an open-minded group. Picard says they aren't there to investigate Kalis or to question anyone's beliefs, even though he previously spent an entire episode trying to prove that Ardra wasn't who she says she was. It was too bad this didn't turn out to be Ardra coming back for her revenge. That would've been awesome. When everyone else leaves, Data questions Worf on why he believes Kalis might be real in the absence of empirical data, even though Worf saw him materialize and Data already said that everything matched the legends. And Worf says he doesn't know if he can explain it. The next day, Gowron beams aboard the ship and demands to know what they know about the person claiming to be Kalis, obviously threatened by him. And he's brought a knife that supposedly has the blood of Kalis on it in order to perform a genetic comparison. I found it hard to believe that the Klingons could have kept that knife from becoming contaminated with anything else and kept the blood in good enough condition to run DNA tests on it after 15 centuries or whatever. And Beverly runs the test and the DNA matches. Surprising Gowron and completely convincing Worf that Kalis is the genuine article. Worf and Kalis talk privately, 
and Worf asks about what comes after death, but Kayla says while he is in living form, he only knows about the living world. What a cop-out. <laughs> when Worf talks to Gowron about it, Gowron says it will lead to war, because not everyone will believe that this is really Kalis. And he believes it's all a ploy by his opposition who wants to oust him. He says he already has people on his own ship who are ready and willing to believe, despite not having even seen Kalis yet. The Klingons all gather together, and instead of addressing Gowron, Kalis tells a story about a man who faced a storm, and said he would force it to respect him, and ended up dead because he was a fool. Gowron throws Kalis off by asking for details in the story, which Kalis cannot answer. What was he wearing? How tall was he? What color were his eyes? And when Gowron ends up insulting him, they both start to fight. Gowron manages to take him down and is about to kill him, but Worf stops him. And everybody's surprised by the outcome, even Kalis himself, because he's supposed to be the superior warrior. The priests go into another room with Worf and Kalis, and Koroth talks about telling everyone that Gowron cheated, which Worf objects to. He cites evidence and suspects there's more going on than meets the eye, and demands that Koroth come clean. And Koroth admits that Kalis is actually a clone of the original Kalis, created from a genetic sample in a lab and implanted with memories. And even Kalis is surprised to hear about all of this. Worf tells him that they brought a lie to life, but they say this is genetically still Kalis, and they needed him to reunite the Klingon people. And he points out that Worf can't know whether this was how the prophecy was supposed to be fulfilled, which I thought was a good point, but they never go into it again. But Koroth begs him not to reveal the truth, saying it will shatter their last chance to unify the Klingon people. So Worf goes to the holodeck Klingon temple to think about it. And Data asks if Worf's experiences have affected his own faith. He brings up his own memories of when he was first told that he was a machine, and how he chose to be something more, and still believes that he can be. He ends by saying that he made a leap of faith, and I rolled my eyes a little bit. Worf decides to tell Gowron the truth, who is at first pleased, but falters when Worf tells him that even if people know the truth, it won't matter, and the lines are already being drawn. He suggests that they can all win if they make Clone Kalis the Klingon Emperor, while they still keep the High Council. Meaning Gowron will still lead, but Kalis will be a figurehead uniting the people. He also suggests telling the people the truth about Kalis's origins. Gowron is resistant, but when Kalis agrees, he decides to go along with it. In the transporter room, as Kalis is about to beam out, Worf talks about how he hasn't figured out his own faith yet, and doesn't know if he believes the real Kalis will ever return. But Clone Kalis suggests that maybe Kalis' words and the message behind them was more important than the man himself, which seems to satisfy Worf. Rightful heir, overall? I really liked the idea behind this episode when it came to the Kalis stuff, but the start of it, with Worf questioning his faith, wasn't very interesting to me. It came up out of nowhere, and it was treated very dramatically, which made Picard brushing everything off feel even less plausible. Once Kalis showed up, the episode picked up a lot, I thought they handled things a little too simplistically sometimes, with characters just accepting things too much, and I don't mean the ones that accepted Kalis. The fact that they cloned this legendary figure is pretty much overlooked, as if the fact that it isn't the real him is all that matters. I would think they would still want to talk to him and still want to, you know, learn things from him. Data's input didn't amount to much, and it felt out of place. I thought it would have made a lot more sense for Picard to be more involved, given his background with Worf, and the potential importance of the episode's events on a larger scale. I did like that they didn't just kill off the clone and reset things at the end, which is what I kind of thought was going to happen, and I hope they bring him up again later. I gave this episode a B-. I gave this one an A-. I like this one, I like the idea, I like the ruse, and the fact that Kalis himself wasn't part of it. I was on board with Worf's gradual conversion, but Beverly's simple genetic test being the thing that totally convinced him was a little weird. Gowron has shown up more than I expected on this show, and I wonder if he'll come back again, and this time with Clone Kalis. It would be interesting to see if their plan works, or if the Empire falls into war anyway. It was kind of a dick move by the rest of the crew to first shut Worf down and call him stupid for having faith, and then disappearing and never apologizing for the rest of the episode. Such a good group of people. And at one point, Kalis referenced Worf's childhood story, and I know they implanted memories. Does that mean they implanted every memory anybody ever had of Kalis? And what if somebody made something up and just lied about having an experience with Kalis? And then Kalis came back and said, yeah, I remember that. And they said, I was just making that up. 
I was also questioning Worf setting fires in his room. Are there other non-human species on this ship that have weird rituals like setting fires and sacrificing people? Worf episodes still impress. Let's hope the trend continues.